This fantasy football bus edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold hard cash with their over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group. Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. And make sure to check out our new Discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN Let It Ride. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening. Kramer dog. G man. I, I was given some feedback that I'm not <laughs> happy enough about the giants yet this off season. So oh, wow. let's Wait, go. Who gave, who gave me that feedback? Let, I got the Dave's fresh cut going. I kept the beer because yeah. you know, Sean, we got some business this week. Sometimes you got to keep people in check, but <laughs> Uh, I got the Dave's fresh cut. I got the I got the the G Men shirt on and uh, ready to talk fantasy bus. Maybe bad time for the energy. <laughs> Perfect time to break <laughs> out the uh, Giants gear when you do the fantasy bus article. I'm realizing oh. it's not it's not maybe it wasn't the best timing. I was happy to wear it out of the house though. So I'm I'm still down in Costa Rica. We were out at uh, dinner and we we're recording this after. <laughs> I tried to text Ryan. Hey, running a little late. I don't ha- like. I don't have reception on my phone and they didn't have Wi-Fi. My dad had cellular reception. So I used his phone to text Ryan, Hey, running late. And then my dad goes, Hey, can I chime in on the text? And he threw in a giant uh, suck text. And then Ryan came out with uh, the, Hey, super team. What could go wrong? Which that's how, you know, you've had a good off season when pe- people's biggest insult is calling you a super team. What could go wrong? Oh, a lot Miles of Sanders, go wrong, but L- Lord no, Miles I, Sanders, you know. <laughs> oh, Ryan, you don't want you don't want your guys confident. I haven't heard Vince Young was confident heard. too. <laughs> that was the funniest because it was Vince Young, the backup quarterback, who dubbed the team the dream team. Yep. Uh, all timer there. All right, we're gonna we we built a ultimate bus squad, a couple bus at uh, all the different positions. We're gonna get to that before we do. Of course, shout out winbet.com where you can have the ultimate fantasy football experience between now and the end of July, July 31st, every $500 you bet on sports or the casino, uh, you could be entered to win the ultimate fantasy football draft experience at the encore beach club, including two nights stay at win resorts for you and your entire league. And that's every $500. So let's say you bet 1500 bucks in July, you opt into this contest. That's three entries there. And it's you and your entire league. So Anyone in the league wins, the entire league wins. All you have to do is download the WinBet app or visit WYNNBet.com to get started today. All for subject to change, terms and conditions at WinBet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. All right, Kramer, before we get to our bus, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a conversation of what defines a bust in fantasy football because I think that. We did not have that conversation prior to us drafting our team. And uh, I think that will make for some interesting conversation, but I like how you're pretending we don't do uh, hours of pre prep for our uh, 45 (laughs) minute show. Uh, Ryan fire it up. It's time for this week's edition of real men of D gens. SGPN presents Real Men of DGENS. Real Men of DGENS. We salute you. Zach Wilson. That's right. Zach Wilson was uh, dating uh, this woman, Abby Guile. 
and then he scrubbed her from his Instagram account, leading to believe everyone that they broke up. And then all of a sudden, she's on Instagram with his former BYO, BYU roommate, Washington Commanders receiver Dax Milne. And uh, so people were given her st- her grief. One person <laughs> even called her a homie hopper, which is a great insult. And then she responds back, <laughs> quote, uh, yeah, meanwhile, Zach was sleeping with his mom's best friend. Oh. That's the real homie hopper. Oh. So again, uh, shout out to uh, the listener in our discord who, who pointed out that brings a uh, completely new meaning to the word cougar because he's, I mean, his mom got a ton of attention at the draft and uh, apparently she must <sighs> run in some interesting circles. Oh, I mean, you know, they, they run with one another. So the, the hot chicks tend to find each other. So I could see why Zach ha- has been looking, you know, hanging out by the pool with mom and the friends, <laughs> no big deal. Sean, it, 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 it's uh it's pretty remarkable that uh, a guy like Zach Wilson go to, goes to BYU, a guy like Dax, what's his name? Milner went to BYU. These guys who soaked, they soaked for four years. It reminds me of the kid <laughs> who didn't drink or do any sort of drugs in high school. And they went to college. And they like Look they went too far, and like they're in they're in the meetings, and they they had to go to the hospital, stomach pump. Th- this is these <laughs> BYU kids when they get into NFL life, they can't handle themselves. They go from the BYU lifestyle, nothing but hard lemonade, if you know what I mean, and then f- bam, right into being an NFL guy. With the, we saw the Tyree Kill situation. He had he had security to keep the whores away. <laughs> Forgive my language, Sean. Yeah, I mean you're in, uh, you're, you're yeah, out of country. Of the they, night. Might, they might be listening. Yeah, they might be tuning in. All right. Uh, we're going to get to the bus team. And uh, of course, make sure you sign up over at sleeper.com slash S GP. Get that hundred percent deposit match up to $100. Perfect way to sweat out some MLB props, grind those out. Make sure you check out the guys over the MLB game on podcast. They've been crushing it. Uh, you can win two X all the way up to 20 X. Again, your priority playing your fantasy league on there. I know we just had our uh, dynasty rookie draft, Ryan. But again, click over on the over under or go to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone. 100% deposit match up to $100. Sleeper.com slash SGP. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers, terms of use, sort of the tails. All right, Kramer, who's your uh, who's your quarterback? So we get, we're going to put together a team quarterback, two running backs, three receivers, a flex, and a tight end. Kind of like, wait, like we've been we drafting, to- Sean, like we've been doing in these best ball streets. Now, what what is your definition of bust? Well, I determined a bust by someone who was going. I don't know. I guess the market would say if you're underperforming your ADP, maybe by a couple rounds. I I, I this is how I took it, Sean. Uh, since yeah. we are a show of entertainment, I figured I would talk through a number of guys pr- who are being talked about. Uh, I didn't go super deep down. I. As I was Googling and doing research, I saw some people, no bullshit, Sean, like throwing out guy like Hunter Henry as a fantasy butt. He's like tight end 18. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. That's a horrible yeah, I, take. I kinda... Anyway, so my <laughs> point is guys who I, I feel like maybe have the up arrow next to their name where I think maybe it should be a down arrow. Yeah. So for me, it's like you have to be your ADP, your consensus has to be like RB one, like a top 12 running back receivers. Mm. I went, you know, top 24. Cause you're ultimately going to have a bunch of receivers in there, but yeah, like top 12 running backs. Who, who do you think are the guys that are going to suck? Uh, apply that for quarterback, running back receivers, flex, so et cetera. If you apply, Kramer, yeah, if you apply that rule of like, okay, there's like 24 running backs, then it's replaced that then like it's bench guys. I probably vi- uh, didn't violate the rule, but I, I definitely went uh, maybe a tad deeper on the receivers than you did, but it will be a good conversation. I promise quarterback. Uh, you could argue. I went maybe too far down the board in quarterbacks. I don't know. Is he a consensus uh, top 12 guy? He's bu- it's close, but Trey Lance. No. Oh, yeah. And, and people are going to come at me. They're going to say, Hey, what, where's your, a-? well, if you, if you want to come at me and be like, he's not draftable, fuck you. Just don't draft D- Dak Prescott. But we agreed, Sean and I, <laughs> I don't think we're, either of us are going to give yeah. out any Cowboys. Cause it's obvious. We, we, we tell you definitely bust Dak Prescott, but Trey Lance is a bust. And here's why we're, uh, you know, if this was only only a show about fantasy, which it kind of is, but we're also a gambling product. 
it, it would still be easy to tell you why Trey Lance is a bust. Here's why: his coach is scared to play him. Uh, the Jimmy G is still. If Jimmy G gets traded to the Browns, I'll I'll meander off this island a little harder. But <laughs> but the the real the real kicker here is the kid. And I quote from a beat reporter this in his first off season, I don't see why he was drafted with the third overall pick. He has shown us nothing with his arm to suggest he's an NFL quarterback End quote. Mm, okay. Cut to this off season. What are we Spicy. hearing? What are we hearing? Wow. The offense is, is going to look a little different with Trey Lance. <laughs> okay. Players on the team. We interviewed Robbie Gold. What did he? We asked him. We gave him a chance to hit the softball over the charity wall that's a little closer than the actual wall. And what did he do? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be. Uh, you know, it's great, great competition. And you know, you know, he he's going to be ready when he's out there. And what? <laughs> Are you serious? And then you start hearing people talking about him to win the MVP. His rushing floor. I'll give you the rushing floor. I'll give you the rushing floor. I'm not like you high on Justin Fields uh, just because of the rushing floor. But here's the problem. I think at some point you have to throw the ball. And I think I think yeah. a guy like Debo Samuel has already showed he's willing to take shit off his Instagram profile. I think you got George Kittle, who's a great blocker, so maybe that works out and he just stays in and blocks the whole time. And this is a Shanahan offense, so maybe they just fucking run the triple option. And he's a quarterback who's running running a hundred yards a game, and I'm an asshole. But I don't think he's going to start. You know, asterisk. Please don't uh, have Jimmy G traded to the Browns soon. I don't think he's going to start. So how the hell can you be drafting him? As he's going in the redraft leagues, he's going certainly in superflex. He's going high. Uh, he's going higher than he should in the best ball. I mean. When you look at the ADP of redraft compared to where, uh, which is he's actually going closer to fourteen, and then you compare that to best ball where he's going closer to ten, I mean I get it, it's the upside case, but you could also be ending up with a guy like who's not playing quarterback. And, and if I'm betting, not, if I'm doing the quarterback position, it's hard to find a guy in the top outside of Dak Prescott. That's an obvious case for a bust. I see a lot of the mainstream media, Sean, throwing Aaron Rodgers under the butch bus. Good luck with that. He just got a new tattoo. That's not a wise thing to do. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'll stand on it. Wait, it's not a good idea to get a tattoo or fade Aaron no, Rodgers. Fade Aaron Rodgers after, after he's he gotten a after he's gotten a piece of art uh, and <laughs> permanently uh, entered onto his skin. I, look, Trey, yeah. Trey Lance. The reality of the situation is he is all world elite. Uh, pro, you know, top of the top of the bar in a lot of categories, uh, attributes and, and potential, but so did a lot of players. So have a lot of Robert Swift. I love using the Robert Swift analogy. Piece of shit, long man who got drafted by the Sonics way back in the day, way before the Oklahoma City Thunder for the younger crowd out there, Sean. And you know why he got drafted? Because he was seven foot one and his arms were long as shit. And you know how many minutes of basketball that dude played? Meaningful minutes of basketball he played? 0. 0.0. Trey Lance is going to play 0. 0.0 minutes of meaningful football this year. You heard it here first. Wow. Love yeah. it. I spoke. That's yeah, too I, much, Trey Lance. I need to edit that. Yeah, Ryan, you, you, uh, I didn't expect the Trey Lance monologue it was to start a, the show off. Bit but of a ramble. I apologize. He is, yeah, there, you could, you could have trimmed it. Um, it Trey Lance, he's, he's number 13 expert uh, consensus ranking. So, Certainly has bust material there. I mean, Derek, you know, he's ahead of Derek Carr, mm, uh, Justin Fields. I think uh, I think I would rather have both those guys than Trey Lance. And your point, yeah, he he may not win the starting job. That's crazy. All right, my. Uh, I mean, honestly, d who plays more games this year, Deshaun Watson or Trey Lance? Well, uh, I I think they're gonna trade. Uh, I think they're gonna trade Jimmy G. I just don't think Trey Lance is gonna be good. Um, we'll see. But again, they haven't traded Jimmy G yet. At some point, the fact that they've taken so long to trade him, it, it, you have to be nervous if you're uh if you're Trey Lance. For my uh quarterback boss, give me Kyler Murray. I mean, right now in you know, the consensus rankings, number five overall, which to me is crazy. Uh he finished last year tenth overall in um in uh total points. But like what do you 
what have you seen in the off season that makes you higher on Kyler Murray going into the season? A, he lost DeAndre Hopkins. That's going to completely mess them up. Yeah, they brought in Hollywood Brown, but and then just all the drama with him and whether or not he wants to be a Cardinal, and they still haven't gotten that deal done, sitting out at OTAs. And this guy to me doesn't seem like a guy he who wants to run the football. And you look at his numbers; he had 544 rushing yards the first season. Then 2020, he jumped up dramatically to 819 rushing yards. He went from 93 carries to 133 carries. And then from 2020 to 2021, he went from 133 carries all the way down to 88. He played two less games, only 14. And his yardage dropped from 819 yards all the way down to 423 yards. His yards per attempt went from 6.2 down to 4.8. We see this all the time with rushing quarterbacks. Generally, after they get paid, especially, they stop running the ball or at least dramatically reduce it. So if Kyler only has, you know, like uh 150 rushing yards this season, you give up what 27, 25 fantasy points on the season, that's gonna make a big difference. I mean, if if you took if you t- took his year last year and and subtracted um, you know, 25 points that takes them all the way down to Carson Wentz range. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just don't see it at a Kyler. I know I'm a bit of a hater, but I mean, he's made it clear. He does this sound like a guy who's going to do anything it takes to win, including running the ball. No. What are we talking about? I, I do think it's scary because he's so good at garbage time, but, but he's another guy. I mean, he showed his commit. I mean, we like we're the assholes who are jokingly saying he's gonna be playing baseball, but I mean, look, this house could burn down quickly. Cliff Kingsbury, I think, see it is hotter than we think. Uh, the idea of bringing in Hollywood Brown, what, what what makes what have you seen from that guy that he's gonna fix anything? I if I hear one more person talk about how he's gonna be better in in, in the coverages that he's gonna see on this team versus what he saw on Baltimore, shut up. It's like we've seen enough from Hollywood Brown. He's not that good. And DeAndre Hop, like you mentioned all the reasons, right? I don't know if you mentioned the fantasy point deficit, but it was, I think, north of seven fantasy points a game less when D Hop was out of the lineup. So Yeah. Uh, I mean, he he's I love it. I Kyler probably I mean, had we not talked before the show, Kyler probably would have gotten I would have come in with the same speech. I don't know if he's playing every game this <laughs> this year, let alone no. week one. I mean, is he guaranteed starting week one? No, yeah. certainly not. So, who's your first running back, Ryan? Stay on the Cardinals, James Conner. I know you like James Conner. James Conner, eighteen touchdowns mm. last year, so you have a little regression possibility. Also, James Conner was relatively healthy last year. Uh, not something he does a ton. And you know what kind of blew my mind, Sean? If I were to ask you, just gun to your, you know, not no gun to your head, I guess, but. If you were to take a stab at guessing how many targets James Conner had last year, what would you say? Uh, 48, 37. So, you know, 37 targets in a year where he was mostly healthy, something that I don't think it's really hard to predict. Mean, Sean, this is a guy that in, even when he's healthy, he misses games, 14, 13, 10, 13, 15. He had another great year back with, in Pittsburgh. And then the following year, what happened, Sean, he got hurt. And so I hate to to make the 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 narrative that just dudes are going to be missing games, but I, I do think the the swell on James Conner has gotten a bit high. And if you're selling if you're selling the Cardinals and Kyler and all this stuff, then how is the the running game going to be successful? Well, it's probably not. Uh, so if if he's not getting carried by volume, he's got to be scoring touchdowns. And if this is not a top offense, I don't see how he's going to get there enough. So uh, James Conner sell. I, I will be underweight on James Conner. That's fair. I, I, you didn't mention Chase Edmonds at all in your analysis there. No, I, I think if you look at his, uh, his stats when Chase Edmonds isn't on the field, his his production is pretty insane. So I, I like the upside case for James Conner there. Well, and again, if, if he's able to stay healthy, I guess my counter to your counter would be. They certainly seem to be setting up to be throwing the ball more in those short pass or run type situations. They did bring in Daryl Williams. They still have Eno Benjamin, and they drafted a guy who they really like, Keontae Ingram, Sean. So yeah, he uh, could he could 
he could he could be a, he could be what could ultimately be his downfall. But he, he's being drafted 14 overall. I'm I'm still higher on him than you. Uh, my first bust, and it's it's turned into an annual tradition. Give me Saquon Barkley. Oh. The, the guy, the guy just oh. can't stay healthy. Wow. I mean, every year we have this conversation. Hmm. He's like Zeke. He had a great rookie year. Um, tons of athleticism, but just never has gotten back there. I, I, I mean, again, if I, if I see some healthy play out of Saquon Barkley, I'll reconsider it. But Ryan, when would you say he was a hundred percent? It was rookie year, right? Today, tomorrow, this season, let's go. I mean, he's back. He's, he was there for the presser. He, he's we, ready. We, we had this, like, could you just, you can just run the segment from last year where we had this exact same conversation. I go, he's not going to stay healthy. You made me watch multiple videos of like close up videos of his quad, <laughs> him chopping in the sand, to, you know, yeah. like say quads are coming uh, hype videos. And yeah, he, he did. He played 13 games, which is almost a career high for him. 162 rush yards, 593, uh, or, you know, 162 carries 593 yards, two touchdowns. 3.7 yards per attempt. I mean, he hasn't had more than five point yards per attempt since his rookie year. I, and yeah, I, I just don't see it at all. Yeah, well, th- this was, this was pretty obvious. I, I do think that the reason you will be wrong if he's healthy is he gets targeted a shit ton. If he's healthy, if he's healthy, <laughs> no, he's healthy now. Yeah. He was healthy to start the beginning of last season. And then he got unhealthy. The reason the reason I'll, uh, like you would be right if he stays healthy is the Bills. Fun fact: bottom five in the league in targets to the running back. So perhaps yeah. it was a talent problem. They didn't have Saquon. Well, no, and then that you know Devin Singletary, who arguably is a better talent oh. um, right now than Saquon Barkley. Well, Ryan, the best best ability is availability. Let's be honest. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Hot, 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 hot. No, that's not a hot take. Uh, Do you want me to pull up Devin Singletary's numbers last year? All right. Should we continue? I'll oh, get, let, I mean, let's get back uh, on the uh, uh, objective. Uh, come on, our we owe we owe it to our fans, Sean. Which, by the way, they should check out Discord. Yes, make sure you check out the Discord and make sure you check out the Pat McAfee interview. If you guys missed that one. Uh, the episode we just dropped last night or AKA this morning, make sure you check that guy out. So Devin Singletary, Ryan, who has a higher yards per attempt for their career? Saquon Barkley or Devin Singletary? I'm a, you're smiling. So is, <laughs> is it, is it not it's Saquon? Saquon Barkley oh. by a mile? No, of course not. He Saquon's 4.5. Devin Singletary's 4.7. Who has more career Swags rushing them. yards? Now keep in mind, uh, uh, Saquon Barkley does have more. Um, you want to move on see, to something I, that the audience can actually do with their lives. Like they can action. <laughs> they can't action you hating on the giants. It's not <laughs> useful for them. Remember that we, we got that review. People don't like when you're irrational about the giants. It's not nice. No, they didn't say that. They said <laughs> irrationally high on the Eagles. People love my negativity on the giants and I've been negative uh, on them for the past decade. And they've been the worst team in the oh, NFL in the past go. decade. Right. My, so my, am I being irrational or am I being correct? Ron? You're I mean, you know, sometimes you get 10 uh, blacks on the roulette wheel in a row and you know, blind, blind <laughs> right, who's uh, your squirrel second gets a nut and everything. All right. Uh, number two, RB two on my bust, all bus team, Deandre Swift. Mm. Okay. Let's, let's talk about talk the, me into it. Talk you into it. All right. What, what would you say when you think about Deandre Swift? What, what do you think about a guy who caught a lot of passes, right? Yeah. All right. What'd they bring in DJ Chark? We like him. Jamison Williams. Williams won't be yep. there the whole year, but we like him. Uh, still have TJ Hawkinson still have stable of other running backs. And here I, I will say he did get the volume of these snaps, but here's the case against him. He was, this is, this is a team where like, I don't know how much more juice there is out of the running back pass catching situation. He was targeted six times a game last year. He was all the the uh, the Lions were only behind uh, Washington and Las Vegas when it comes to running back target percentage. They were bottom ten in in, in uh, wide receiver target percentage and top six in running back target percentage. So, Sean, what does that tell you? 
seems basic. They bring in a bunch of stud receivers. Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown still there. Th there are a lot of mouths to feed in the passing game, and sure, it could be Jared Goff just likes checking it down to the running back. And I'll be wrong here, but I, I would almost argue, and especially you bring up his game log, he missed a couple games. But but again, it it feels like he squeezed the most out of the the, the efficiency. Thirteen games his rookie year, thirteen games his second year. I don't know if that that's necessarily something we can project him to stay healthy at this point. So to see him almost like people have forgotten uh, the, to see him going in the early second round. I I'm just, I'm passing at that again. Another guy, I'm gonna, I think James Conner and Deandre Swift are probably going in a similar spot in your draft. And I'm just not, not right there for me. Yeah. I, I, I don't really have a hot take on him uh, one way or the other, but yeah, I, I, to your point, if you, if they, if he's going to lose a passing, uh, Passing work. I, I think fading him is is certainly not crazy. I, I have the all right. Here's the exact number: Just the fifty only fifty six percent of their targets went to wide receivers last year. That that number just has to go up with what they did. So I I think for sure that he's going to lose some volume, and if he lose any volume, he's not going to be he's not going to be a guy that's going to finish at his ADP. Agreed. All right, my uh, my second bust here for the running back position. Hot take, Ryan. Give me Austin Eckler. Oh. Now, I I don't know if he's you know I don't think he's gonna have a horrible year. I just think where people are drafting on him, they're gonna end up being uh, disappointed. I, you know, they they brought in a bunch of um, you know a bunch of other talent. I think Keenan Allen, uh, you know Williams, th they're gonna continue to draw more receptions away from him. I just would be surprised if he ends up catching. Uh, what did he catch? 70 balls last year. And his touchdown efficiency was insane. He had 20 touchdowns last year. I just don't see that happening again. And last year was the only season he played an entire season. Now he, he played 16 games, so he didn't even play the entire season. Uh, you know, leading up to that, he's, he started 10 games, eight games, three games, zero games. He's not, he's a guy that always has some nagging stuff going on, but I don't think he's, it, you know, the 20 touchdowns overall is crazy to me. And he just seems like a bit of an outlier with the efficiency. And again, I'm really high on Isaiah Spiller. I think Spiller is going to, they drafted Spiller for a reason. They drafted Spiller to ease uh. Eckler's workload to keep him healthy for the playoffs, which I think they're going to end up in this year. That's what the plan was for the Chargers. So I think the volume decrease was a slight efficiency decrease. He's not going to be a, you know, he's being drafted what, like top three running backs? I just don't see it. He's, he's fourth right now. Uh, and that's with Christian McCaffrey ahead of him, who I'm also not high on. 100 catches. That's the, that's the case against. But I mean, look. Well, you, but gonna... I mean, yeah. I guess I just don't see him. Everything I'm seeing them do, they're signaling less workload for Austin Eckler, not more. All right. Well, now, I... I just don't think they draft a running back that high uh, if they were planning on. Uh, on continuing. I, I, was that ran, crazy I ran into some, like some of that automated content out there. And it, it, it was, uh, it was clearly just scraping data and giving you like the, lo the best value fantasy guys and the worst value guys. And they were all near the bottom. So like the, where the variance, the number of spots would be the most and the most overvalued guy right now is, is Isaiah. Spiller. And it just, it made me think of you and your love of him and, and how it's you're you're really <laughs> building the case against Eckler in a, in a very uh, eloquent way. Just just b backing it in there with your nice rookie draft pick that you love, ignoring no, the fact I, that he's going to catch a hundred balls. I'm high on Spiller. We see this all the time of a rookie running back in you know drafted high or relatively high, put into a high powered offense, uh, and they dude they burn through these running backs like it's nothing. That's you true. know, I I think the days where <laughs> I think he was a workhorse last year because they didn't have another. A uh, good second option, and I think now that they do, I think he's going to be in trouble. Uh, you know, carries wise, volume wise, running back so like a nice hand rolled uh, cigarette around a campfire. Oh, delicious! You know what goes well <laughs> next to a campfire, Ryan? Cup of that trade coffee. Oh. That's right. Oh, delicious trade coffee. I'm down here in Costa Rica. Some amazing coffee down there, and I'm sure there's plenty of Costa Rican beans available over at Trade Coffee. 
Um, they, they hook you up freshly roasted beans from 60 of the country's best craft roasters, small businesses who pay their farmer farmers, fair prices, sustainably sourced, Again, it just tastes delicious. 450 roasts. You take a uh, very simple coffee quiz. You get your coffee dialed in exactly how you like it. Trade has delivered over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping. All you got to do is go to drinktrade.com slash SGP. That's more than 40 cups of cups of coffee for free get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash sgp and let trade find you a coffee you'll love that's drinktrade.com slash sgp for 30 dollars off wide receiver Kramer, receiver all right so the uh, my my first two receivers are pretty close in in the rankings i'll i'll go uh i'll go to deontay johnson first i i just this is a guy that relied on massive volume, 169 yeah. targets last year, tied for second. Uh, if if Cooper Cup and his ridiculous 191 or whatever didn't exist, hell of a year from Deontay Johnson. Him and Big Ben just they, they were made uh, for each other. Just quick passes, low a dot. Just trusted he was going to be there. A lot of throws that maybe a guy who's worried about throwing an interception doesn't always make. And as much as I, you loved Deontay Johnson last year, and you were right too. I I just don't see like how does he really outperform what he did last year? And I think there's a real strong case to be made, and why we we love Najee, or at least I love Najee Harris. That a I think they're going to look to be a little bit more of an establish the run kind of team. They have the good defense. They understand they're going to be maybe playing with a deficit. I think you also have the 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 clear. Uh, emergence when you're playing that kind of ball to to get it to your tight end uh, down the seam in Fryermuth. I think you're going to see an uptick in targets there. I think you're going to see an uptick in targets out to Claypool, who you know maybe he's the better bet, uh, especially for me with the way the ADP is right now. Uh, right, uh, what is I don't know what you're looking at or what you're going with. thirteen for uh, Deontay Johnson amongst amongst receivers. Sean and, and when, when I have I'm still scrolling I, I'm still scrolling looking for his his running mate because I mean why not take a stab on Clayble he's going to be running the more interesting routes he's definitely more interesting around the red zone and so again all of that being said I think I think we saw a a top of the mountain type of year from Deontay Johnson I don't think this is going to be a top ten offense I don't think they're going to be he's going to be able to score a bunch of touchdowns and and cheat and I don't think if you had to bet he had 169 targets last year. Which again, good for second in the league. What do you think he has this year? Oh, uh, geez. I would probably, you know, I think he'd be fortunate to get to 100. And, and you know, uh, bringing in um, Pickens, I think, really could, uh, really could shake things up there, too. Because he's not so yeah. good at drafting. I didn't even at, mention at him. drafting young receivers. It, it, it just seems like it's, it's very, it's hard to make a case how he's going to maintain or go up. And then, you know, the last thing I'll sprinkle in here, cause I, I, I stumbled into these, these nuggets and I think they're, they're helpful for some of these conversations, but Steelers 64% of their targets went to wide receivers last year. That's just not going. To, that was good for seventh in the NFL. That's not going to be what their offense looks like this year, period. It's just not going to, that's not going to be how it works. There's going to be a, a much, a much higher a percentage going out to the tight end, which they were not uh, super high on last year. And I think, you know, as we discussed Najee, even though he had a decent usage, only 16% of their targets went to the running back. I think that's going way up this year. So uh, Deontay Johnson, I'm staying away from him at his ADP. I mean, you, you look at some of the guys around him, Sean, I, I, I love T Higgins. Uh, I, I love Michael Pittman. DJ Moore, uh, Mike Williams, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, like dudes, I, I would much rather have. So, again, underweight on Deontay Johnson. Who you got? First one, Tyreek Hill. Mm. I, I just, again, maybe this is just the mm. Jalen Waddle hates seeping through. And there's, there's certainly a case where all that underneath stuff that Waddle was getting. Uh, it ends up going to Tyreek Hill. I just don't think, it, I, I don't think, I don't think it, Tua can support two viable fantasy football receivers. I think Waddle is going to be the one he supports because he already has the chemistry with him. Uh, we saw that wobbly uh, ball on the deep ball there. I, I think honestly, I'd rather have Gasecki 
um, as far as like where he's getting drafted, then, then Tyree kill, because I, I just don't think he's going to be able to get Tyree kill the ball a lot. Maybe they give him all that Jalen Waddle easy stuff. Uh, and, and he still puts up similar numbers, but ninth overall, it, you know, that's where he's being drafted. I just don't see that from Tyree kill in this Miami dolphins offense. Maybe, maybe, you know, Mike McDaniel completely revamped offense and things will look completely different and they'll, they'll dominate, but I just don't see it out of Tyree kill. Did what was the remind me, Sean? I am new to this football thing. Was the coach there when they drafted Waddle? No. Mm, mm, interesting. Uh, no, they, I mean, and, and they went out and, and spent and all that money on Tyree Kill. Mm, interesting. Uh, and they're no, gonna right. Maybe he steals all of Waddle's volume, but Waddle's one of the few guys uh, Tua can complete a pass to. So why would you get rid of him? I, or, you know, why would you get him out of the offense? And I, I just don't think, you know, Tyree Kill had a great fantasy last year, be, year because he had 111 catches. I just don't. You think he's going to get 111 catches in this offense? I, I don't think he gets more than 80 catches. I mean, I, I guess I would argue Waddle is not going that much. I mean, he. So he, here's the debate because I have Waddle on my list of busts. Okay, uh, Waddle was super, he's the low efficiency guy. And so to me, I, I guess the reason for the Delta is the fact that Tyree kill has a higher ceiling. And, and so see, I, you can so be Tyree against kills the, at Tyree kills at nine Jalen waddles at 19. I'd much rather take a shot at waddle at 19 than, than Tyree kill at nine. I, I think waddle at 19. I mean, he was 21st last year in points in PPR when he finished 11th in targets. I think that's almost certainly impossible with the addition of Tyree kill. And as you mentioned, Gasecki still in the offense. I, I think it's natural to believe that with the new offensive scheme, that the tight end might be a little bit more involved, especially when you have a man like Gasecki. And Oh, by the way, is, is the transformation not like this is, I know they were a team that ran the ball last year, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to change. So assuming like even targets stay the same, I don't see how Waddle finishes better than 21st when he got all those targets and wasn't hyper efficient with it. I mean, if you, for reference points, like if you just want to compare Waddle finishing 21st and uh, Jamar Chase finishing in the, in the top five with 12 fewer targets. So I, I do think the Tyreek Hill appeal to me, not that I'm, I'm selling, I'm, I'm like over uh, weight. Sean on Tyree kill, but I'm certainly, I'm certainly going to have more Tyree kill than Waddle. I'll say that if I want my two of stacks. All right. So is that was, did you also give your uh, Jalen Waddle bus case in there or yeah, I mean, it's the, wanna... it's the efficiency case. I mean, I figured I'd bounce it off with the Tyree case, but yeah, I think it's the efficiency and the fact that he was 21st last year and now Tyree kills on his team. And so I think he, you know, even at 19, I think he maybe struggles to finish as a top 30 receiver. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up for me, give me, he's being drafted fourth overall uh, for a receiver Debo Samuel. I mean, are we kidding? I like Debo as an athlete. I like Debo as a receiver, but again, we have uh, Trey Lance coming in supposedly at quarterback. And then, you know, you have Debo holding out for this contract, all that drama associated with it. A big part of it was he didn't want to be used as a running back. And, you know, they 49ers, uh, you know, go out and end up drafting a running back. People seem to be high on him and that Shanahan likes this new running back they have in the building. I, I you look at Debo's numbers last year, 59 carries, 365 yards, eight touchdowns on the ground. That's crazy. I mean, he could still have a pretty good year and do what he did receiving wise and lose out on a tremendous amount of points. I mean, he had a really good receiving year uh, and I think he's going to be used just as a receiver. Uh, I don't think he's going to be, uh, uh, you know, even just his receiving numbers, I think will be down with Trey Lance instead of Jimmy G. So you get rid of all his rushing stats or at least most of them and a decrease in efficiency on the passing game. How does he, how does he get to be number four overall? I don't see the path. 
Uh, I mean, I, I certainly am not going to be drafting a ton of Debo's. I, I think just it, it's hard to invest in the Niners' offense at all with the potential of Trey Lance, like look staring you right in the face. I mean, yeah. ima- imagine having some Niners on your fantasy team, and you turn on the first game, and you see a guy who just we're talking like Ryan Leaf level accuracy, Jamarcus Russell <laughs> level. I mean, he's got the arm strength, Sean. That's why they. That's why he's so appealing. All right, my third wide receiver. You might, you're maybe you're gonna get mad at me for this one, but I feel like it's on brand for me to shit on Justin Fields indirectly. So give me Darnell Mooney. Mm. The arrow is way up next to him, and I, I, I so I'm, I'm, let's just say I'm doing some prep for for the National Football League because maybe we're gonna talk about it a lot. Boy, I have some concerns about who is going to help Darnell Mooney get open. I, this is a guy who he's, he's had only brief stints of being the only guy on his team. And you will say, Hey, he's got that chemistry with Justin Fields. I am not bullish on this offense, taking a step forward. I'm not, I, I think there's a small chance and let me pull up where he's being drafted. I think there's a small chance that I'm wrong. And he he's able to excel as a true number one receiver. But how often do we see this? We see this at cornerback. And we see this at wide receiver. The difference between the being the guy and being the number two is huge. And so for a full season coming into a season, being the known guy in an offense, that's going to pound the rock. Do I really want to and mm, sorting by receiver? Got to scroll down a little bit. Starnell Mooney. Yeah. So I'm so, seeing him at 25th and yeah. to your point, like Brandon I'd Cooks, have hit, Elijah yeah, Moore, I, Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton. Sorry, Sean, keep going. No, I mean, there's a lot of names around him that I would much rather have Gabe Davis, uh, Rashad Bateman. I would rather have Devonta Smith. I would rather have Hunter Renfro. Uh, you, Hunter Ren, yeah, you can talk me to Hunter Renfro too. I mean, again, I, I like Justin Fields for the rushing upside. I think the team could be a disaster and he'll get a bunch of garbage points. Um, and actually that kind of comes back to the, the lions where I, these people think the lions are going to be good in fantasy and also good as a real team. Like it feels like it's gotta be one or the other, right? Like, how are you, how are you going to eliminate all the garbage points you were getting? Cause you were the lions be a good team and then still dramatically increase your efficiency. I, I don't, I don't see that case at all, but you're right. Even as a guy who's high on Justin Fields and fantasy, I think Darnell Mooney is being overdrafted. Like uh, he's a fun flyer for me in best ball with the field stacks, but I would just, I'm fine. Just taking fields and commit and you know, Khalil Herbert uh, of those guys, as far as fantasy, it, it just, but you're right. That yeah. feels, it feels like a big overreach. I mean, and Bateman's probably a good comp as like a number one receiver in a offense, but he's he, even, he's kind of a number two. Cause Mark Andrews is the number one. So I, I, I would, I'll be, I'll be shocked if I'm wrong here, but Darnell Mooney with the defensive coach too, like, aren't they going to want to run the ball? Aren't they, they're going to play slow ball. You know, Justin Fields scrambles a little bit. I, it just seems, seems like, you know, again, another case of the fantasy community, like getting all high on Justin Fields and wanting to be hyped on someone on that team. Cause you got to stack him with someone in best ball, Sean. Ryan, get the uh, get the social team on notice. Uh-oh. My bus for the receiver position. Give me Cooper Cup. That's right. I'm out on Cooper Cup this year. Oh. It, as far as where he's being drafted, number one overall, dude. He had, he he had a hell of a run. In fact, comically, I I just don't know. Ryan, tell me where I'm wrong. What receiver do we ever see didn't become good until their fifth year? And that fifth year, they have a historical outlier season. I, it just to me feels like just setting up for such a regression case. He had 145 catches, previous Did- high 92, 94, 40, 62. And even the number of games started, he started six games, eight, 14, 12, 17 plus. Um, the playoff games and the Super Bowl. This guy's going to be exhausted. You throw in the fact that also Stafford also had a career year, also perfectly clean uh, health wise, efficiency wise. I mean, Stafford moved to Los Angeles for one reason, right? Requested for to get a Super Bowl. Yeah. He got it. Imagine being, now you know, it would be to. like, 
if Colby moved out when he came out to LA and then got like, you know, got a co-star with Rambo in the next, uh, you know, Rambo six after that movie came out, he wouldn't be working hard. He wouldn't be grinding it out. It's Come true. on Cooper cup and Matt Sa- Cooper cup. It's not like this guy has this kind of rare breed athleticism. You're, you're talking oh. about an FCS guy. Like, come on, let's get realistic here. I don't think he's got back to back years. And if you're drafting him as the number one receiver, you're saying, I think he can run it back. And I just don't see that happening. Wow. I just, don't see it. they play on a red field and, and they are from the F- FCS. I, 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 unlike you, clearly a big FCS guy, he's an elite level route runner uh, feels offensive that you're just throwing him under the bus as a guy who's going to regress for no reason. I mean, let's not forget Sean. His quarterback was Jared Goff. That's fair. Anyway. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. look, it is scary to take a guy who just had a career year with that high career year with the quarterback who had the career year. And it wasn't like he had a career year of like, oh, okay. You know, he had, <laughs> I, it's not like a career year by a slight margin. It, it, he had he had like, you know, a, an outlier of all, he had a historic year for white for receivers. I, I just don't see him doing it again. Yeah. I mean, we do know the water cures hangovers in LA though. So that could be helpful. I, I mean, Ryan, are you, I, what am I, uh, yes. I get it. It's a, it's I, a simplistic take, but I just don't see him running it back like that. Where was this crazy athleticism the previous four years? Jared Goff, he needs a needed a precise quarterback for his precise route running. I don't know. That's I guess that's the angle. No, I mean Safford is good for fantasy, uh, and obviously in real life as well. Like he won the Super he Bowl. The Super so, Bowl. I I st- I don't know. I'm still not Neg. sold. On him. <laughs> All I right. still don't. I don't know. Are we flexing? Or are you on? Yeah, we're flexing, right? Yep. Go for your flex, right. right? So. I felt this was, I feel like I had to put him in the flex instead of the wide receiver, but I'm, I'm uh, and let me see where he's being drafted. He's being drafted a couple spots behind Mooney. So again, maybe you can uh, come at me, but Michael Thomas, here's the case. Why are we <laughs> drafting Michael Thomas at all? Sean, yeah. fun fact, trivia question. Do you know, do you know the last time Michael Thomas played football? In the National Football League, I guess it's a little redundant there. Uh, it was it was like week five of 2020. Week five of 2020. Actually, fun fact: he played in the playoffs of the 2020 season. So he played in 2021. Oh yeah, his last game, New Orleans, where they took on Tampa, and guess what happened? Went out like a little bitch. Four targets, zero receptions. You know what else that was, Sean? That was Drew Brees' last game. You want to talk about a guy who needed a pep talk about how if he could he could do anything, he puts his mind to it. Because that <laughs> mother after that game, he left football. He has not returned yet. And we are drafting him around guy professional wide receivers. Why are we doing this? They went out, they traded up to get another Ohio State receiver to replace this guy with. Not to bring him in to be friends. These guys are alphas. Michael Thomas. All right. Here, here are the guys behind Michael Thomas. I'm, I'm I think I'm sorted by let me go PPR, because of course we're I don't think we mentioned it, but we are doing PPR today, Sean, right? PPR show. All right. I'm gonna read a couple above and a couple below him. Ready? Amal Ross St. Brown. Portland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Adam Thielen, and then the couple below: Gabe Davis, Hunter Renfro, Allen Robinson, Elijah Moore. I I, I just read off eight na- nine na- eight no eight names. Zero of those names am I passing on to take Michael Thomas? Devonta Smith, no. you taking Devonta Smith or Michael Michael Thomas? No, I mean Michael Juju, Thomas may not play this season. <laughs> Rashad Bateman, Tyler Lockett, even Drake London. Give me no, all. He's, he's still like somehow not a hundred percent. He's a very, he's, he's got Ben Simmons vibes written all over him. He hasn't practiced, which is weird. I thought he was like a badass. I, I couldn't get a handle on this guy. He was really good at catching balls from drew Brees. That's it. 
I mean, he, he's the he's reason money. he was great was he had, he, he's one of those guys. We, we always talk about this. He, he, he was a 30, like 35% target share guy. If you can be a 35% target share guy, you're always going to be elite. But what does it take to be a 35% target share guy? Well, it takes a really good quarterback who can get you the ball a ton and lock on to you. So I, I you know, is Drew Brees, is Jameis Winston going to be Drew Brees? No, obviously. I mean, this is going to be a running team too. I, this is a very, yeah, it's very curious to me that people are back talking themselves into Michael Thomas. No. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, similar, similar handicap. Give me Amari Cooper <laughs> as a bus. <laughs> I guess he's not a cowboy anymore, so we can officially throw him out as a bust. CD Lamb, yeah. by the way, is a bust as well. We didn't even mention Zeke, but he's a <laughs> fucking bust. I mean, you know, draft him twenty-one overall, and and you know, some of their best talent is at the running back spot. You, you, and you, Nick Chubb, Cream Hunt, um, and you look at Amari Cooper. First off, there's a reason the Cowboys let him walk. Like he mm. he just continues to kind of decline inefficiency, um, 865 yards, which is uh, second career low in yardage, um, you know, yards per reception, uh, super low for him. And it was low the past couple of years, 12.7, 12.1 the other year. He did have eight touchdowns, but again, you know, as much as it pains me to say it, Jacoby Brissett is obviously a much, much worse quarterback than Dakota Prescott. And how long are we going to have, um, you know, Jacoby Brissett there? Is he going to be able to build up chemistry with Deshaun Watson? It, this just, this Brown season is just setting up to be an all time nightmare. And lastly, like Amari Cooper has very much been a front runner uh, when it comes to the team, right? Like when they're playing well, all right, he'll show up. But like when big games, when you need him, uh, he doesn't show up and he, he struggled getting open when you have CD lamb and some of these other guys on the other side of the field. I think defenses are just going to completely key on him. Maybe he gets there fantasy wise because of the volume stuff, but I, I don't think they're going to look to, they're not going to be a pass first team. The Browns. I just don't see that. I mean, that's the, you nailed it and I got it up right here, but only the Atlanta Falcons last year threw less to their wide receivers, Cleveland threw 50, only 50% of their targets went to wide receivers for reference, the Rams, the bills north of 70%. Yeah. All right. Ryan, before we talk tight ends, you know what our lead pipe lock is when it comes to internet security VPNs, that is of course the one, the only I P vanish, make your internet security issues disappear, lock it up from uh Hackers, advertisers, prying eyes. You never know who's going to get into your electronic data. IP Vanish helps you keep your browser history safe, secure, encrypting 100% of your data. That means private ch- private details, passwords, browsing history, all that good stuff completely shielded, even your physical, physical location. IP Vanish makes you virtually invisible and save 70% off plus a 30-day money-back guarantee. 70% off and a 30 day money back guarantee can't beat it. Just go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. Use that promo code SGP. Claim your 70% off ipvanish.com slash SGP. All right. So we're going to save kickers for last, right? Our, our kicker, yep. our kicker bus. Um, fucking Ryan Santoso. Remember that guy? God bless that mustache. <laughs> All right. Tight end. I'm I, 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 first I'd like to apologize uh, to the Kramer gang for putting this man in my top 10 upon further review. I even laid out the case in one of my notes to myself when I'm making our top 10 tight end list. And that's Dallas Goddard. Listen, I, I said it when we were doing the show, he didn't dominate when Ertz left. There wasn't this massive uptick. They brought in AJ Brown. I, I think there's absolutely uh, a scenario where Dallas Goddard completely flatlines uh, where he was. And when you, when you pull up his targets last year, and this, this is what really alarmed me. If I'm a, if I'm a Dallas Goddard guy, he was mostly healthy last year. Uh, I, I assume he was rested in that last game. 70, he was only averaging five targets a game. And so to be drafted in the top 10, to be drafted, I don't, what, what's his consensus, Sean? You got that in front of you? Let's see, I can pull it up. Yeah, he's seven. Eight, yeah, seven, eight, depending on the, the score. I, 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 I'm, I'm actually, I'm way out on that now. I think 
I think that's maybe his his absolute ceiling. And again, I think you know, I thought about putting AJ Brown in this slot. It just felt silly because AJ Brown can take a two yard slant and take it to the house. And I don't think Dallas Goddard can do that. So if his role remains mostly unchanged, it's hard to see how he's going to get more targets and more catches. So unless it comes through touchdowns, which sure always a possibility from a running team, he'll be on the field in, in that part of the, 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 the field, but just, a, it does just seem like I'd rather fade him and bet on AJ Brown than, than the other way around with their ADP, just because it, it does seem like AJ Brown, even, even if you buy the argument that the targets might not be there, he didn't have the targets in Tennessee either. And, and it was a lot about his ability to make plays once he got the ball in his hands. So I, I think the people making that argument, I actually, this is for you, Sean. So you can take this back to, to Tom green and, and, and delight him. But AJ Brown, I think is actually a pretty safe bet where he's going in the third round right now. I guess maybe end the second, because it does seem like even if the, the targets aren't there, he does, he does a lot with a little. And I, I think Dallas Goddard on the other hand, you know, we'll see. He only what seven, well, I just said it five a game, but 76 targets last year. I just think that's hard to imagine him having more than that with AJ Brown joining versus Jalen Rager. Yeah. I mean, I think he, you know, Ertz was there for the, you know, first half of the year or a decent chunk of the games. He did have some spike weeks, uh, post Ertz, six for one Oh five, two touchdowns against the jets, seven for one thirty five against the Washington commandos. And another six for 71 against the commandos six for 92 in the playoffs. He did seem to have his best month in December of uh, last year. So I don't know if that was, you know, what could you attribute that to? Um, Yeah. Is that like, finally the offense figures out, they got to use him more, but yeah, I I do think AJ Brown is going to eat into some of his workload. But if you look at his like season long averages, I think that balances out with the, with Ertz not being there at all. Yeah. He had two great games and that, that was pretty much it. So I mean, so yeah, you, you, you factor, you, you kind of flatten the curve out there and then it becomes really scary. Well, yeah, he had two great games, but you could look at it like he had two great games and then I would say two pretty good games fantasy wise, all in that stretch towards the end of the season. So how much of that continues into next year yet to be determined. My fantasy bus, give me TJ Hawkinson. He's being drafted eighth overall. This is just a, I don't know. I honestly, I struggled a little bit for finding like an obvious tight end bus because I think it's like very clear the tiers and what you should be doing with tight end. But I do think of the people out there, Hawkinson's still getting overdrafted. I mean, he missed five games last year, um, four touchdowns, 61 catches. I like him as a player. I just, I just still don't see this lion's offense completely clicking. And I do think there's a world where they're slightly better and they're not getting some of that garbage stuff they got for fantasy. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, he had 67 catches in 2020 of 101 targets now down to 61 catches, 583 yards compared to 723 yards. And, you know, some of that injury stuff obviously could flare up. I, I don't know. I'm just not huge on Hawkinson because I think if you're projecting he's going to get into the top five or even where he's being drafted, top seven, I think the offense has to be good. Like, it's very rare we get, you know, maybe like a guy like Kyle Pitts where the team's horrible and the tight end is still really good. Uh, and I think that's going to be the issue with Hawkinson. I just don't think the offense is good enough to carry a top 10 fantasy tight end. Only, only Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey, and Rob Gronkowski commanded more targets per game last year. So I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit with you. I think uh, well, bringing Jamison Williams and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I think having I, I when I go back and look at my rankings, you know, I think there's some uh, some changing changes happening from seven to ten. Well, and and again, it's not this tight end I did struggle with as far as like finding the bust, but I do think, I don't think he's going to be a top 10 tight end. That was pretty obvious, but like the guys that are top five right now consensus, it's tough to make a case uh, for them to be completely out. The other one that would probably be on the edge is Kittle, 
but I think <laughs> Kittle is just such an easy target yeah. um, that even a guy like Trey Lance couldn't fuck that up. Huh. Be careful. <laughs> I, I mean, dude, Trey Lance play, like hasn't really played much football in the past three years. That like no. football is a sport you got to play. I if there's one thing I've learned watching football is when you miss a lot of football. Like Le'Veon Bell was a bad motherfucker. Then he didn't play football for a while, and we haven't really seen Le'Veon Bell again. Uh, it's just not good for your. It's not good for your football playing ability to skip time. That's that's my take. Wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. Uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey guys, make sure to hop in our discord sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. We get up to uh, a thousand people in our discord. Then we become like uh, I don't know, a cool discord visible to public airwaves. So uh, make sure you hop wow. in the discord over there. It's going to be the new place to hang. And uh, yeah, discord's pretty solid. Kramer hit the, uh, hit the drop there. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Great bust episode. Kramer, let it ride.